All right. So here we go. It says great emails. Bill, great emails. Cycling cunt. Dear Billy, training wheels. A cunt is a cunt. Whether you are driving a car or riding a bike. Why do you think cyclist cunts are cuntier than a lazy car driving bald cunt like you? Okay, okay, let's let's look at that whole sentence. <clears throat> I'm lazy because I drive a car. How does that make me lazy? I guarantee you, buddy, you're not working harder than I am in life. You're not. Okay, you're not. So go fuck yourself. And then secondly, like this is how you why you guys are cuntier because. I don't hold up 40 fucking cars behind me and act like I don't know they're there and I'm too much of a cunt to just move five feet over. You know, I'm not saying that that there's not bad drivers out there. I'm not even saying that I'm not a cunt. Okay, but there is there is a scale here. You know what I mean? There's slapping your fucking neighbor and then there's robbing a bank. Different jail sentences, right? So I don't know how you think just riding down the street like you're in a bike race in the middle of the fucking lane and nobody can get around you and you act like you don't notice that there's 20 cars around you and you can't just like, you know, when there's a moment where the guy could go on the other side of the road if you just moved over a little bit and you just still don't do it. Yeah, I would say that you're more of a cunt. And this is from a cunt, so I know one when I see one. Anyway. If there are no bike lanes, bikes will be on the road. I don't mind that they're on the road. It's when you're in the middle of the road, blocking the whole lane, and there's no bike lane. You're just blocking the whole fucking lane. That's what I'm talking about. These fucking cyclists, they they keep acting like they don't understand what you're talking about. Uh, You should consider putting pressure on your politicians To build more bike lanes. Oh, is that what I should do with my free time? I should take up your cause? Making the roads safer for cyclists and less annoying for angry cunts like you. (laughs) See this shit? Look at this. Like I'm the fucking problem here. And you guys aren't. Um, All right. I guess it's my fault. I guess it's my, like, I would be less of an angry cunt. That's what, that's like a really a Dr. Phil solution. I'm not an angry cunt because of cyclists. I have anger issues from fucking abuse when I was a kid. That's why I'm angry. You dumb fuck. All right. And I guess you going out there in your little stupid outfit, blocking traffic, when I'm trying to pick my kid up at school or I'm trying to get to a meeting and you just won't move over a cunt hair. And then you turn around and I give you the peep. I'm not even beeping at you. I'm giving you the peep like, hey, buddy, just letting you know I'm here. Can you let me get by? And then you just turn around and give me the finger. But like I'm the angry cunt, right? I don't know. Love from a Lycra. I don't even know what that is. Wearing mostly law-abiding cyclists from Ger- Berlin, Germany. Well, at least... And he goes, please keep talking shit about cyclists. I love hearing your podcast while causing traffic jams on roads with bike without bike lanes. I know you guys seem to be really good at that. All right. Uh, Biker writing here. Dear anti biker Bill, I am not an anti biker. I am anti staying in the road with a funeral procession of cars behind you. I'm just asking you fucking ballet slipper wearing cunts to just move over a little. Don't you guys always yell, share the road? Anyway, I've been an urban cyclist in the People's Republic of Seattle for over 10 years and have had hundreds of harrowing encounters with cars, pedestrians, and other bikers. Yeah, I imagine the big thing, rather than getting run over, which is probably the worst, is uh, people opening their car doors after they park. Um, I've had people do that to me when I'm driving a car. Um, There are idiots and or thoughtless individuals doing everything. But most of us, or at least half of us, okay, okay, some of us are just trying our best. Dude, I saw this morning, I came down my fucking street. And right as I'm getting to the, to the, uh, you know, to be able to turn onto the busy street, I see literally 20 cyclists in a row go by. All right. And here's the deal. They all had these little flags in the back of their cars, uh, their bikes. 
They all had helmets on and they were dressed in regular clothes. And guess what they did? They rode on the side of the road and there was no problem getting past them. And I was thinking like, yeah, that's how that's how people used to do it. It's the new thing where you go all the way out in the road. All right. As you alluded to by saying people in regular clothes are usually good shits. Your empathy is admirable as always. Oh, God. I think he set me up here. The people in Tour de, Fan- Tour de France, Tour de France, I always said gear, taking a lane just because they're assholes, and I abhor them too. Oh, look at this. But sometimes you have to take the lane. It's safer than riding in the door zone next to parked cars. Okay, that's fair enough. So if there's no parked car, then I can be upset. Here in Washington, we adopted the Idaho stop last year. Yeah, I looked this up. In California, uh, cyclists has to come to a full stop at stop signs and red lights, which evidently none of them know that. Here in Washington, we adopted the Idaho stop last year, which puts into law that cyclists can treat stop signs as yield signs and stop lights like stop signs, uh, which means you'd have to come to a complete stop, look both ways, and if it's safe, you can go. Uh, they've been doing this in Idaho since, since the 80s, and it has proven to decrease traffic for motor vehicles and bikes alike, as well as reducing collisions and fatalities. Well, then that's good. Then I'm all for that. It all, it's also how most bikers behave anyway. Uh, furthermore, cyclists have killed exactly zero people, not including themselves, by running traffic lights. Well, dude, that's the point. That's the point is that you're going to run the light and then somebody's going to come the other way and then kill you. And then for the rest of their life, they have to deal with the guilt of that. So because they don't kill anybody, that they should be allowed to ride out in front of people and then get themselves killed and then the person has to fucking live with that? I don't know. Whereas over 38,000 people die in car-related crashes per year in America, so the onus is on them to be more cautious Wow, dude, you really took a leap there. Okay. So the, I would tell you this, buddy. I am way more cautious if I'm riding, if I was to be riding a bicycle down the street, knowing that there's cars and people texting. So uh, I don't think that riding around, maybe you're not saying this, but it sounds like you're saying that riding around, well, it's not my job to be more careful. It's those people's jobs because they could kill me. I feel like if you're the person that could get killed, you should be extra careful and not blowing through red lights and stop signs, even if it fucking, you know, reduces traffic, which is not why you guys do it. You do it because you don't want to fucking take your little dancing slipper out of the fucking hook on the th- on the thing there or whatever. Um, anyway, I hope this wasn't too long. Now finish your kale and watercress nut smoothie. That actually sounds yummy. Do I fucking goddamn foray into fast food last night? Get your pasty fat ass on a bike and go for a ride. <laughs> um, uh, no, dude, you wouldn't. You wouldn't catch me on a fucking bicycle. I, there's just no fucking way. There is. I'll ride a bike bicycle at a beach where there's like a fucking bike lane. I'll do that. But there's no fucking way I would ever be dumb enough to ride a bike down the street where the cars are. Let alone dress up like I'm riding in a bike race. Who wants to die dressed like that? Was this guy in a triathlon? No, he was going to the post office. People sponsor that? No. These people, he's just giving, he's just, he's, it's just free advertising. Um, anyway, all right, I'm going to stop being a cunt. I get it. It's, it's better for the environment if people ride bikes and all of that stuff. So I respect cyclists, but can you just, can, if, there's, if there's only one lane and you're right in the middle of it, is there any way you could just fucking move over for half a second? And if somebody gives you a little peep just to let them know they're there, not give them the fucking finger? You know, can you just fucking do that? And I have even brought up when, like, when that sea of angry kids all decide that they're all going to ride bikes down the street and they get super aggressive and start yelling at you as you're sitting in your car like, I, I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just trying to get where I'm going, you know, just like a bunch of kids who were never hugged by their parents riding by in this mob and then deliberately stopping traffic. Like this is a protest against what, what your, your parents who didn't fucking hug you. 
All right, let's see what those protests are all about before I make another bigger fool of my... Bike swarms... Uh, I spelled it wrong. Bike swarms. Swarms of dragonfly. What do you write? Bike gatherings stopping traffic. Block while riding, group riding. The legal aspect. Oh, wait a second. Come on, this is a whole fucking... It's a whole new world out here. All right, blocking... Well, this is what I, I've wondered about. Is this, this is probably legal. Uh, whenever taking to the road, safety is often at the air forefront of our mind. Come on, buddy! Just get to the fucking point. This is like one of these fucking... St- it's like one of these fucking, you know, you look up, you know, how to, how to make uh, cinnamon French toast. You know, cinnamon French toast. People really don't know where the origin is. I don't care where it is. It's called French toast. I'm guessing it's from France. If it isn't, I don't care. Just tell me the ingredients. Please. Um, I never take to the road. Safety is often at the forefront on riders' minds. Maybe even more so when riding in a group. Staying together, dude, there's literally so much advertising. I can't even read the, the words here. Staying together on a long ride can be challenging when maneuvering through city streets and intersections. One solution motorcyclists have found is block. Oh, this is motorcycles. It's a whole other fucking can of worms. Um, I wonder what would happen if we all switched to fucking bikes. There's no way you could ever do it. I mean, people won't even put on a fucking mask for three minutes to walk into a 7-Eleven to buy some beef jerky without feeling like they're living behind the Berlin Wall and pouting and, and, and Gronk spiking a gallon of milk. I love when people do that. And then what, am I supposed to clean that up? Is that what I'm supposed to do, you fucking baby? All, all those phony patriots. I love all those people with the American flag in their front yard and they act like they're a patriot. You're, so, you're just a selfish cunt. That's all, I'm, that's all I'm really seeing in all of this, okay? You're a selfish cunt. You just want cheap gas. And you don't give a fuck how many babies have to die. But when it comes time for you to step up and do the right thing for your countrymen, all of a sudden, you know, oh, I don't trust the government. Uh, love it or leave it. Um, anyway, it's time for California to legalize the safety stop. I'm not reading any of this shit. I'm not reading any more of this crap. Um, all right. Where the hell am I? This is what happens when I don't copy and paste my stuff here. All right. Redhead at the gym. Redhead at gym. Dear Billy Bald Fuck. Uh, Today I saw the hottest guy, a ginger, at the game, and I immediately thought of you, LOL. Yeah, that's a joke. Uh, Because you are one yourself. Holy shit, look at that. Getting a compliment. Do you have any tips on approaching a redhead, the rarest of breeds? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Uh, you know, we respond to hello. I would say, you know, we might have a surprised look on our face. You know, I'm just fucking with you. I mean, I, is there a way? I know you're just joking around. Um, I don't know. Why don't you just fucking go up there? Why don't you try out? I'm not going to fucking write an opening line for you. How do you approach a redhead? Uh, so what level sunblocks do you use? Um, oh, good luck with that. Good luck with you banging the hot ginger at the gym. Uh, redhead down on, oh, look at this. I'm getting everything from cyclists to, uh, and redheads this week. I like it. I never really reach out to my people. Uh, redhead down under. (laughs) My God, this might be my favorite one. Hey, Billy shit tits. I love profanity that doesn't really even make sense, but that, it, but that also does. Uh, you said you never heard of the term Fanta pants on the last podcast. I haven't. I've heard of fan of the soda. I've never heard of fan of pants on the last podcast. As a fellow redhead from Australia, it has been thrown my way many times before. The Fanta soda drink being orange color and pants referencing your pubes. 
Oh my God, that's hilarious. It's a simple dig that the curtains match the drapes pretty much. I like that. Fan of pants. Uh, growing up, I never had much luck with the ladies. Moved abroad to Europe and bam, two weeks in, met my w- now wife. Together for five years with a beautiful daughter. I wasn't looking for the one at the time, but this is usually when it happens to people, supposedly. Uh, so hope that encourage your other listeners to make the move abroad if the fish ain't biting locally. Yeah, all of a sudden you got an, you got an accent. You're a world traveler. You're interesting. Uh, unless you're a mouth breathing moron, then you just embarrass your country. Um, also, we just went on holiday to Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's a beautiful country. Check it out one day. Love what you do, Bill. All the best to go fuck yourself. Um, I actually was watching um, the women's 100, me- uh, what, 10,000 meter race, which was unreal. It was so fucking hot. These women were just collapsing. I mean, I've never seen like Olympic athletes just like tap out like that. It's just like this fucking, I don't know. I don't want to scare you with the global warming, but I mean, you would think that if you worked your whole life for that moment, you'd go around the track enough. You've obviously ran 10,000 meters before. They couldn't even get through it. Um, But I was watching, there was uh, two women from Kenya, I think, and then one woman from Bosnia. And uh, I don't know. I like watching those endurance suffer fests. I also watched a little bit, like the first quarter of the women's gold medal. I missed the guys' gold medal. I watched some of the swimming. Uh, I don't know. I really got into it. I really actually enjoyed the Olympics this time through. Um, Laughter ban. Um, By the way, getting back to the other guy, that is such a big thing. I wish I did that when I was younger. If you just, just go out and, you know, when the world becomes normal again, if it ever will, if this is the new normal, um, yeah, you go travel somewhere and you got a fucking ac- accent, forget about it. You know, you're like Kevin Bacon in Footloose. All of a sudden, you're teaching a whole town how to dance. Uh, laughter band, Dear Billy Boo. Well, people are going to call me Billy Boo Who with the amount I'm going off on fucking cyclists. Um, dear Billy Boo. I like Bill, Billy Boo Hoo. Dear Billy Boo Hoo, what are you bitching about this week on the podcast? Um, I'll tell you what I'm bitching about. I, ever since I've signed up for watching the Red Sox online, they can't win a fucking game. They just lost three or four to Toronto. They lost two or three to the Tigers. They got swept by Tampa. And I'll tell you, the schedule doesn't get any easier. We got Tampa coming up. We're now in second place. Ay, 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 ay. Um, but what's his face? Sale is uh, rehabbing. I think he had a start last night in AAA or something like that. When he gets back, he'll be able to help us stop the skid. We'll get it going again. Hey, better to have a skid now than in October. Doesn't everybody make the playoffs now? Playoffs. Uh, Dear Billy Boo, a few months ago, a reader wrote into the podcast about censorship and some crazy stuff that was happening at their kid's school. Last week, I got a letter from my kid's school. It was basically an outline of what kids and parents should expect going into the new school year. All right. Tucked away in the middle of the COVID protocol and exciting school activities was some new guidelines on joke making. It essentially says that kids are not to make any jokes and parents should instruct children not to provoke laughter. Oh, my God. Do you see what happens? Do you see what happens when unfunny people get a voice on social media? Wow, they're going to get rid of class clowns. I thought that this was maybe some bullying related stuff and wrote it off. Later in the week, I ran to my neighbor who has a kid in the same school system. He's a real nice guy and loaded and does a lot of volunteering in town i.e. organizing leagues and raising money for families who need help. Real salt of the earth. He tells me that he ran into the principal at a recent outdoor event and asked about the bullying clause in the email, specifically if this was provoked by any serious bullying of a child. The principal proceeded to tell him that laughter had nothing to do with education and jokes of all types were offensive. This sounds like a bad movie. My neighbor asked if knock-knock jokes were okay, and he said absolutely not. 
He, he went even further to say that teachers were instructed to discipline any child who was laughing or being silly. This is great. I mean, they are, they are creating the incubator for the next generation of comedians, possibly the greatest comedians of all time. Um, I had a hard time believing this, so I did some, something I've never done nor thought I'd ever do. I called the school and talked to the principal. I had to know for myself. This sounds like clickbait. After a few questions about what prompted the no jokes allowed policy, he accused me of being an educational detractor who was promoting archaic tendencies in my own children. What was your response? Ooh, big words. I wear a tie uh, because he said this to him. He said, because I said that laughter is an important part of life. Even then quickly changed. He then quickly changed the subject and asked what my political affiliation was. I said, what? Oh, in a high screeching voice. What? Like you would say playoffs. He responded to my what by saying he had the ability to contact child services if he felt any child was in danger of mental abuse. Wow. Yeah. This guy's handling his position of power really well. Needless to say, my blood was boiling and I hung up the phone. I have a few ideas about how to handle this. I don't want to stir things up, but also it seems unwise to let someone threaten me with child services and call me archaic for wanting my son to be able to laugh and not be a drone while in school. How would you handle this? Um, all right. How do I handle this? Uh... I don't know. How do you handle this? How 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 do you do this now with like all of these fucking people out there that just ruin all of this shit? I don't know. I mean, you can't get your kid kicked out of school. I mean, this sounds like a, a great clickbait piece for uh, a newspaper or something, but that always seems like a bitchy move to me to just fucking rat somebody out like that. Um, I don't know. You know what I would actually do? I think I might go above the guy's head and just say that I was simply, I think you have somebody who's wildly out of control with his own power. I simply asked what, you know, why my kid couldn't laugh in school and he threatened to call child protective services. First of all, dude, I, I wouldn't, I mean, it's the only thing that should make you mad is the threat of that, that, that he actually is just threatening you. But what are they going to do? They're not going to do anything. They can't take your kids away because you question why my son can't laugh at school. He's going to have no bruises or anything like that. But it's, that's, that is a full on fucking crazy person. Is this real? Or are you just, are you just trolling me? I can't believe this is true. If this is if this is a joke, it's really well written. I gotta look it up. All right, I'm, ta- I'm you fished me. I'm I'm fucking taking the bait here. Laughter ban in schools. Speech code of the month. Drexel University's harassment policy bans inconsiderate jokes and inappropri- inappropriate inappropriately. Jesus Christ, I'm done. Inappropriately directed laughter. <laughs> wow. Wow. Mom, I got suspended for three days for inappropriately directed laughter. But where were you directing this inappropriate laughter? I don't know. I turned my head in the face of the janitor. I was looking away from the fat kid, and it turns out he was missing a leg. I it was I was trapped in a triangle. Um, Tajanika laughter epidemic. What is this? The Tan Tan Tanganika laughter epidemic of 1962 was an outbreak of mass hysteria. I'm on Wikipedia now, or mass psychogenic illness. Rumored to have occurred in or near the village of 
Kashasha. Nothing I've read in the last 20 minutes has seemed real. On the western coast of Lake Victoria in Taganika, which was once united with Zanzibar. This is none of this is true. Became the modern nation of Tanzania near the border of Uganda. History, the laughter epidemic of, what do they have, rabies? On January 31st, 1962, at a mission-run boarding school for girls in Kashashashashash. It started with three girls and spread throughout the school, affecting 95 of the 159 pupils. Uh, it's, it's the laughter epidemic, obviously a, a slang for whatever disease they had. Symptoms lasted from a few hours to 16 days. The teaching staff were unaffected and reported that students were unable to concentrate on their lessons. The schools closed on March 18th. The epidemic spread to somewhere else. The village where several women lived, mostly young villagers, had laughing attacks. All right, what happened? Did somebody light a giant fucking bong and the cloud went over the, over the this? True or false? Here we go. Laughing epidemic, true or false? It was no joke. The 1962 laughter epidemic was no joke, according to some stupid website. The Chicago Tribune. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I, this is the fucking internet. I, I don't believe anything on the fucking internet anymore. I just, I just don't. I, I'm not going to fucking sit here wasting my time looking up the laughter epidemic. Did it happen? Did it not happen? Um, what would I do with that guy? Um, well, in a perfect world, you could walk up to him and be like, hey, fatso, or whatever the fuck he looks like. Hey, baldy. You know, I would, I would approach the guy and just be like, you know something? You threatened to call child services. You know, I, I got to be honest with you, dude. I, I, I never do this. I would go above that guy's head. And I would, I would file a complaint. And what's the worst that's going to happen? Your kid can't go to that fucking school? Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. If this is actually real, fuck that guy. I would go above the guy's head and just say, you know, in a very calm way. You know, I mean, that person should not have that job, nor should they ever have any power. Um, I'm trying to think what happened to that person as a kid. You know what I mean? They had man boobs. It was shirts and skins and gym class. And he had, they made him take his shirt off. Some sort of, uh, what was that, that, that movie where they dumped the blood over the, uh, the prom queen? Carrie. This guy had some Carrie shit happen to him. So now your kid can't have any joy. Um, yeah, I would go over his head. That's what the fuck I would do. I would, I would not tolerate that. Um, oh, man, that reminds me of a landlord of mine that helped break into my apartment when I was on the road. They, they were checking the smoke detectors, and I was on the road for three weeks, so they had the, evidently the right to go into my apartment. To make sure that there was no, uh, you know, there was nothing wrong with this, the, you know, the smoke detectors working. Because if they weren't, there was a fire that could affect the whole building. So under that, they came in. And uh, I remember I came into my apartment and I just felt like something was wrong. Because it was a notice, but I just felt and I just started looking around. And uh, they had stolen a camera. They had picked through my CDs. They just took some knickknack shit. And I went downstairs and told the guy. And the guy immediately goes, you know, I don't appreciate you coming down here accusing my staff of that. He immediately got defensive. And I was just like, you fucking idiot. Now I know you did it. But there was really nothing I could do. I called the cops. and They said, well, unless you have like, you know, they dusted for fingerprints or whatever. They, there's nothing they could do. And uh, so I just stood down there in front of the office and just told a few people not to rent from there. That's all I had. I was like, dude, I'm a comedian. I can do this all day. And the reality was I had to go on the road the next day. So my fuck you to them was I changed the locks and then I moved out. I moved out. 
and then left the real lock in the middle of the apartment. But then years later, I realized, well, when they couldn't get in, they just called the locksmith. So the locksmith, dealt. what I basically did was I gave a locksmith some money. I cost them that money. And they never gave me my uh, security deposit back or anything. It just was a crooked fucking place. Well, that takes me to a bad place. All right, let's plow ahead. Overrated. Dear Billy Cake Belly. belly. <laughs> Cake Belly's good. I love shit tits. Uh, I am currently on summer vacation in Greece. Good for you. While driving near the beaches, I noticed a lot of people, mostly tourists, put out their hands and arms through the window while driving and doing stupid wave motions. Yeah. Maybe it's an Instagram thing, but for me, this is the equivalent of people whistling while walking uh, to demonstrate to everyone, hey, look how look at me. Look how happy I am. This is one of the stupidest things and most annoying things I am currently seeing on a daily basis, and I am secretly hoping that an upcoming truck or palm tree cuts on of this country waving arms. All right. Cuts off. Country wave. Anyway, love the podcast and wish you and the your beautiful family all the best. You know, that's something I would do if I was in Greece on a vacation. I would allow something like that to annoy the shit out of me. So I, I feel your pain. Well, you know how people are. They probably saw somebody else do it. And they're like, I want to do what people do. And that's basically how people are. You know, remember that planking or flipping the water bottle? I actually didn't mind the flipping the water bottle now that I think about it because it just took me back to the days before video games where you just had to, like, entertain yourself. <laughs> but then again, people couldn't do it without videotaping, uh, videotaping themselves. <laughs> I don't know, people. I, you know, every time I think that I have regained my sanity during all of this shit i go off the rails again and this is this is one of them this has been one of these podcasts so if you're concerned about me i understand and rightly so if you're just sitting back laughing at me i also get that too but um anyway let's see who my fucking red Sox have next is it tampa I think they were playing an afternoon game today, weren't they? Let's see. Red Sox score. Come on, Red Sox. Score. Red Sox score. Woo! Eight to four Red Sox. There we go. Bottom of the seventh. Well, let's turn the game on. Looks like I missed everything. Toronto Blue Jays go up one nothing after one. Then the Red Sox come back with three runs in the top of the second. One run in the top of the third. Blue Jays get one back. Four to two. Three more runs, top of the seventh. They must have their fucking the fifth guy in the rotation, the Blue Jays. Um, to make it, uh, let's see there, that would be seven to two. And then, of course, Blue Jays get two more, seven to four. Then we get one, eight to four. What is it right now? It's the bottom of the seventh. Do I dare turn it on? Bill, for the love of God, you're the fucking, the mush. Don't turn it on. I'm turning it on. Watch this. Nobody out. Runners on second and third. All right. Here we go. Bottom of the seventh. Turn the fucking turn the thing right now. Let me see my red socks. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this 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 son of a bitch. Vladimir Guerrero's son is up. This guy's a beast. They got a runner on first base. Is there anybody out? Oh, when he throws a fucking pass ball. Jesus Christ, the second I turn it on, it is me. All right, just hang out with me for half an inning, shall we? Runner on second base. He's even looking around like, I can't fucking believe that guy just threw the ball that bad. Oh, I know this guy. This is this Japanese guy. This guy throws fucking gas. I love this guy. I've been watching for six whole games. I love how the mullet's coming back. Look at these batters. Could they have more fucking protection? Look at the guy. He looks like he's peeking out of a phone booth. He's covering up his whole jaw. All right, Alex Cora. He's wearing a mask, you know? Look at that. He's coming around. Where'd you get that mask? Out of a trash can? <laughs> 
All right, what do we got here? Here comes the pitch, and it's in the fucking dirt. He goes to third base. Bill, shut the fucking game off. Can't do it. I can't do it. What are we doing here? All right. Alex just called on the black guy who yelled, throw the damn towel. And fucking Rocky, throw the damn towel. Called his son in. Uh Uh-oh. And our catcher hurt his wrist. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going, you know we're going to win this game, right? I mean, you guys, you guys are going to lose. You think we're going to lose? Yeah, yeah. Ah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. They're talking. What are we doing here? Is there a reason you're throwing it into the dirt for some fucking reason? We're trying to win. Oh, it bounced up and caught him on the wrist. Come on, guys. How many outs are here? What do we got here? Zero outs. Runner on third base. Well, that's it for him. Well, he usually pitches well. Everybody has a bad day. I had a bad podcast today. All right. Yeah, one guy. One guy said good game. Good game. Two guys. Good game. All right. Now, this, okay, now they're going to change pitchers. So this is going to take an entirely different. Here comes the guy. Ah, uh, fuck. I thought I, had a, I thought I had the night off. The red glove because it matches my socks. All right. I'm just doing this because I know somebody's going to find this fucking footage. I didn't know you could switch it. You can switch pitchers in the middle of an at bat. I didn't know you could do that. I thought he had to get hurt. All right. That's it. And there's some woman who just caught sunlight in a fucking pot. All right, I'm done with this shit. Okay, that's the podcast, everybody. Uh, Why would people be capturing sunlight during global warming? Are they capturing the breeze? Is this what was in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? Now I'm into this commercial. Keep it golden. Power down four to nine. Nobody's going to do that. They won't wear masks. You think they're not going to have their air conditioner? It's my, it's my fucking God-given right to keep my balls nice and frosty from four to nine. Go fuck yourself. This is America. All right, that's it, everybody. Um, I'll check in on you on Thursday. Go fuck yourselves. Go Red Sox for the love of God. Go Red Sox. Uh, and I will talk to you on Thursday. All right? Enjoy yourselves. Try to be positive. You know, I don't know why you'd listen to this podcast if you're trying to be positive, but, uh, you know, hang in there. All right, I'll see you. 